I think that's enough refactoring. Why don't we go on and build some more tests? So let's go back and remind ourselves of the different actions that we have available to us. And we, we might want to just go straight down the list. Unfortunately, uh, you need to remember what this action does versus the next action does. The, for, the second action actually adds users to our database whereas the third action will create a form that allows us to send those users to this page right here. So there's a slight dependency from a user interface perspective and if we want to test it, uh, that dependency exists as well, that we need to be able to create this form first be, that we can fill out so that we can then try to send some data to the data to the web server to try to be created. So we're going to skip over create and go to new first and once we've got that form then we're going to go back to create and see if the data that we receive will work properly. So um, even before that though we of course need to write some tests. So let's go ahead and edit our um, tests for our user pages. Now in, instead of showing users, this is going to be uh, creating a user. Creating user. And we actually have a number of tests that we want to write here. So um, please bear with me while we do that. In order to create the user, the first thing we want to, to do is we want to visit and we want to visit this new user path right here. So new user path and that will describe what we, we want to do here. So there are um, a couple things that we want to be able to do. The first one is we want to make sure that when we display our password fields that they are actually um, hiding the, the text. So we're going to do this. Um, it, uh, let's put some word here. Hides password text. And here we go. We, sh we should have field this is an, again a uh, capybara method and it just checks that the form that we're uh, doing has a field and you don't know why yet uh, but this is the right um, thing user password and I'll show you that this is the right field and we're explicitly going to check that it is a password field and not some other type of, of input field. So everything else is fine. The, the username uh, could, could be any old element. I suppose we could check for it should have a username and a an user email and those types should be text. But they could also be text area, I suppose. There's nothing that stops and, and so we're not going to put those tech, uh, tests in even though uh, they, I suppose, could be valuable. The next thing we're going to do is see how our, our system responds to valid or, or invalid information. So we're going to, with invalid information, what we're, we're going to do is we want to see two things, or we don't want to see two things is probably a better way to put it. Uh, first thing is, is it does not add the user to the system. So the last thing we'd want to do is get some invalid user. Maybe it doesn't pass our validations or it's, it's, it's uh, blank because something happened and then say, oh, that's bad, but we're adding it to our database anyway. So we're going to explicitly check for that 
by writing a test um, using the expect method. And the expect method gets a, as a parameter, it gets a block and s that says when you do this, what are you going to expect? And so we're going to put something in here. And then you're going to expect it to do something or not to do something. In this case, we do not want to do something. And that not thing is that we do not want to change for our, our user model, we do not want to change its count. Okay, so if we go ahead and we click on a button that represents our submit, then we do not want to have the user model count method change. So what's going to happen here is really cool. What the test is going to do is it's going to call the user model and check what its count is. Then it's going to run this code. It's going to click on the button, the submit button, and then it's going to call the user model again and its count. And it's going to check whether or not those values change. And the test passes if they do not change. And it fails if they do. So that's the first thing we want to do with invalid data. The second thing that we want to do is we want to see some sort of error message. And so what we're going to do here is again we're going to click on our submit button and then what we're going to expect is that it should have something that represents an, an error message. Um, and that, that's going to be real tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a new method and called have alert. And I'm going to expect it to be a dangerous alert. Uh, and we'll see why in, in some later episodes. But let's just expect it to, to be danger. Well, so where are we going to put this function have alert so that we have access to it? And the answer is in our spec directory, we are um, going to need a, a new directory. So let's do that. Let's make spec support. Now, uh, what our our spec is going to do is it's going to load all the files in that spec support directory automatically for us. So we're going to create a new spec directory, a spec file in that s support directory we just created. Um, let's call it uh, I don't know, alerts. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to create a new method and we'll just call it have alert, right? Because that's what we created. And we're going to um, pass it uh, well, I don't know what we're going to pass it yet. So what have alert is going to do is it's going to call the method have selector. And what have selector is going to do is it's going to look for some CSS selector, just like you might uh, see in in any other jQuery type thing. Uh, and I don't know for now. We don't know what that's going to look like. So let's just put in some dummy text right here. And then here's the first thing we want. We want the alert type uh, so that we know if it's a dangerous method uh, alert or it's a warning or if it's it's something else. And the have selector um, I happen to know takes a second parameter that allow us to pass any options to it. So I now have our have selector and we'll have to come back here and fill this out but for right now we're going to look for this. So we have alert type and we have options. So we need to be able to pass those in. The only way we can do that is if we receive those here. So I'm going to take those as parameters. Alert type and we have no idea what the alert type is going to be and our options. Now we don't want to force people to pass us options 
I mean, after all, right here, we didn't pass any options. So we're going to give as a, a default parameter no options. And the no options is just an empty hash. So now we've created this method called have alert that's going to look for some CSS. Well, let's call that a class. So let's do dot alert. Um, it's going to look for a class alert danger or something like that. And we can go ahead and fix this up once we figure out how we're going to do those. But for right now, um, we have a, a method that we can pretend to use. And this is nice with this method. If we change how we do our alerts, if we add classes or if we put them in some sort of JavaScript, we'll be able to change this without having to fix all our, our tests later on. So I'm going to uh, close that and come back to our value here. So now we know that we have an error message when we send invalid information. So that's probably all we care about, right? We don't add anything to the system and we give a message to the user. Well, what do we do if we do have valid information? Let's see what that looks like right there. Well, before we do anything, we need to describe what that valid information is. So we're going to do a before and end. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill in some field. Uh, let's call it username. And we're going to give it some text. And I'm going to just do our normal John Doe here. And we'll do this for our email. And we can do John Doe example. And of course, we can give it our favorite password with password. So now we have all of that data entered. Now what we're going to do is check some various things. The first thing we want to do is it allows the user to fill in the fields. So all we need to do here is check that click button submit works. If it does, then it allowed us to fill this in properly and, and click our button right here. Yay! That's great. Then we kind of need to do the opposite of what we did with the invalid information. In this case, we it does add the user to the system. And it produces a um, welcome message. Go here. It does add the user to the system. It's going to look very similar to this line. So let's copy and paste it down here. But our change is that we do expect to change the count. And now we can be even more specific. We don't want it to randomly change. We don't want it to go from 4 to 10. We want it to go from 4 to 5. And so we can add one extra parameter here. We expect when you click on the submit button to change the user model's count method by positive one. This will be nice. When we delete, we'll change that from positive one to negative one. But uh, that's all we, we need to do here. And down here, we are going to go ahead and click on the submit button. And what we're going to do is it should have another alert, but now it's not going to be danger. In this instance, we want a success message. And let's uh, also utilize that options and tell it that we want to have the text say something like welcome, new user, or something like that. We don't need to be too specific here, but 
there we go. Now we've got a, a number of tests here available to us and they describe what we want. Uh, review again. When we visit that new user path, we're going to hide the password field. We're going to reject invalid information by not adding users to our system and producing an error message. When we fill in our data with useful information, we're going to allow the user to do that successfully, add that user to the system, and have some sort of welcome message as a result. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is make sure that something crazy doesn't happen and that those tests pass for, for some reason. That should be really crazy because we haven't done anything to, to make them pass, but it's always good to, to verify that they fail. And they do quite heavily. So let's start trying to make those pass in our next series of videos.